the sun goes down, all the stars will shine. I will stand wherever I am. the Lawrence Garden Farm and as you can tell everything went poof the last time you saw it in the last video. I wanted to show you an update. Everything is getting so large but we have been so busy planting and we were out of town for an awesome trip to Michigan. We went and visited Walter's Gardens and I did a, a speech on how to run a business and tips and tricks on social media so that was really new for me <laughs> and really exciting. So. But now we're back home and we're ready to share more tips uh, in your garden and show the updates. The last time I shared this garden, you guys saw it as just little plants, little seeds. And as you can see, the spinach is ready. If it goes any longer, it's going to start bolting. We got to give these onions a little space. They're growing amazing, but the spinach is definitely taking off. Let's just take a little peek here. Look at how amazing this oh, looks. It's real good. We really haven't had any bug issues. You're still going to find, you know, like a hole here and there, and that's totally normal. We're really keeping a really good balance in our garden right now. So we do have aphids. We do have little, you know, wormies trying to, you know, make themselves at home. But we've also got a lot of beneficials in the garden, too. I told Casey, I know she told me that it's like this every year, but I feel maybe I just pay attention more this year but i feel like the aphids are are worse than ever this year and okay. you can let us know if you if you feel the same way maybe it was because here we had a really mild winter and i know that sometimes goes along with the bug ratio you know when you come into the uh the spring and summer the well, winter doesn't yeah. kill them off as much and that and it's really dry so there's no heavy rains to kind of wash them off the plants super dry here yeah but you know what I found a lot of in our garden? Our um, larvae from the um, lace wings. And lace wing larvae, they call them the lions of for aphids. Ooh, I didn't and know for that. all the bad insects. And I shouldn't say bad insects because yeah, they the bad insects eat our plants, but they also provide food for the beneficial. So if you're seeing both bad and good. That means that you're doing something right in your garden. There's like an area where you have like a ton of like aphids, especially those black ones right now. They're really heavy this time mm -hmm. of year. Um, you know, you can treat those areas. Just use something organic. And then once you treat it, once it's dry, it's okay for other things to land on it. But this is a good time of day to treat things. If you see like things being overtaken. So I'm really trying not to clip the onions because they are around that space. What's really nice about having the spinach around our onions is that it kind of created like this mulch to keep them nice and wet. It also created like a ground cover effect where they did not get any weeds in between. So they held a lot of moisture. They're growing really nice. Here's your dinner, hon. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Popeye. <laughs> And right behind here, it looks a lot like spinach at this point. Um, this is our heliochrysum. You may know it as straw flowers, so we don't want to cut those. This will also alleviate some of the pressure off of the heliochrysum by cutting the spinach here. And it'll allow it to get a little bit more sunshine now too and kind of grow up. And as you can see, we've got weeds in here. So I still got to go through and give everything a nice little weeding. Everything needs a little attention and it's just that time of year where you go through, you pull some weeds and everything will just end up taking off and looking amazing. It's the time to start harvesting, creating and enjoying. My favorite time of year is like right now through, I don't know, I like every time of year. <laughs> <laughs> I even love the resting. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at these potatoes. 
I kept mounding them as much as I could in these boxes, but this is as much as I can mound them. I have to say that for us in a raised bed, potatoes probably, you know, we did harvest potatoes a few years back and we created a video and we got a lot of potatoes. They were still, they were still really successful, but I mean, really, if you want to get the most potatoes out of your plants, like these could have been you know continuing to be mounted super high if they were out in a ground bed or in a grow bag or even a bucket as long as you drill holes on the bottom of a bucket it's super cheap and you can use it over and over and over that is the way to grow these really because here look at we can't we can't get them mounted as high as they're growing we can't get the ultimate amount of growth in potatoes off of each plant that you could if you were to grow them in a different way so i just wanted to share that really quick and we'll still get potatoes and jason's ready to talk he's like would you stop talking no, already <laughs> we get it we get it you want more potatoes <laughs> So now we're gonna go and look at the uh, the monster radishes over here. It's already picked a couple of them. But look at look at how big these are. So the ones that I've had that have been this big so far, and this is almost like a little apple. They've been really juicy, uh, not as not as hot as you know. Some people don't like radishes because it has that like hotness that like comes up through the throat, through the nose, like that horse radish type hotness. But I feel like the bigger they get, the less potent they get. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that, but come take it's a look usually, at here. It's usually the hotter you get. What do you girls need? Uh, the what? what? They're riding tonight. What do you girls need? They need more oh, gas, okay. hon. Okay, the gas. I gotta go get some more <laughs> gas. The gas man. man. <laughs> look at the, the gas man. Look at Let's problem. let's eat them. Let's prove your theory oh, right or okay, wrong, okay, right? Okay. Let's prove your theory right or wrong. The All bigger, right, so the less. The theory would be, the smaller they are, the more compacted the flavor is, and the more like crazy hot it's gonna be. Um, not so much. Yeah, yeah, that one really. So didn't this have is much. a different variety over here, and I'm gonna try to find what variety I grew here. So this is a variety that can handle the hot heat and still not get hot. In flavor um, so the more hot it is the more that the um, radish actually starts getting hotter spicier in flavor and the larger it gets a lot of times it gets spicier in flavor but they've made so many different varieties that this variety is supposed to well let's let you maybe bite it's in. just this variety that in general doesn't get yeah, as hot let's so. let you go ahead <laughs> getting a little hot <laughs> a little hotter a little hotter no it's actually not that bad yeah <laughs> so in one of our past videos i want to share this someone told us that the quickest way to lose subscribers is eating on camera really and i told them we what's the fun the in that <laughs> <laughs> i do anyways like but I love that. I feel like, how do you know what it tastes like then? <laughs> how do you, true. like if no one's trying, so you're just gonna take someone's word without right. even putting it, having them put it in their mouth? Like what? Yeah, you gotta- That's insane. Taste test and tell people what it's all about. So these really aren't like that crazy hot. They're nice and juicy, they're big and ripe. And it's funny too, cause they're planted so closely together that they're like, some of these are yeah. like flat on the sides. So you guys remember when I seeded these, I showed how I seeded them when we um, planted this garden. And oh, yeah, look at that. yep. Boop. They all fit perfectly together. And they're right next to the sweet wormwood, which smells amazing. Did you even smell that, hon? Oh, the sweet wormwood does smell amazing. I know. And that's why we're what? showcasing these gardens because you guys saw these planted up. Mm -hmm. So what would you describe the uh, the smell of the sweet wormwood to? How I always would, think of fairies. That? I just think of fairyland. That's what fairyland smells like. It's so sweet. It's, it's got it's got like a sweet uh, pine Christmassy smell. It does, right? yeah. Um, but yet not. It's not that. 
No, it's not. It's it's not like your traditional pine. But you're very close to what that you know. It's it's right. It's not pine, but it is. It's almost like something you would add into a winter mixture. Yeah, it's it's very with unique. like pine and eucalyptus, right? And, you know, which you do have a sweet wormwood spray. Yeah. So Casey has taken the sweet wormwood plant and distilled it. Mm-hmm. The the cool thing about distilling the plants into the sprays that she makes is right now we get to smell this but come winter time and come late fall time you just you can't anymore but if you distill it into the spray it smells exactly like the plant does yeah and you can keep this like we've got a whole barrage of them in the house and it can be the dead of winter we can look outside and say oh remember when there was sweet wormwood in that box psst, 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 psst. oh it brings yeah. me back to right now today when i'm enjoying it out here yeah the sprays <laughs> connect you to the garden yeah they do it's they key do. it's mm-hmm. key to survival in no winter blues <laughs> right it is yep i just want to show you guys a few more things in the garden here especially the gardens that i've already showed you on how we planted them in the raised beds here because it's been probably a good four weeks since we've done an update there are a ton of ladybugs on the soybeans so we've been gathering them and capturing them and putting them onto the garden. It's been fun to like see them in the garden even more so. All of our St. John's wort over here returned from last year, even though Jason had this brutal tearing out of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a rampage, just ripping things out I of here. I came out, you know, for cleanup <laughs> days and just like, heave ho, got rid of everything. And Casey was like, Whoa, 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 hold on. There were things that I planted that were like meant to come back next year. And so, so these did come back on their own though, right? Yeah. You ripped them out, but mm-hmm. they had, um, roots Tubers. that were still there. Yeah. yeah. It must be something like that. The flowers are the most medicinal parts and they're so pretty, but when you mash them, they actually turn red. A baby ladybug. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. A little Ooh, baby wow. ladybug. He's really active. There, yeah. And I see a black swallowtail. Where? Right below it. Right there. Oh yeah. Nice. So this this dill over here recedes oh, itself. Yeah, we have a lot of dill that recedes itself and we just allow it because the black swallowtails love mm. dill in the beginning and we have been just having probably way too much fun watching all of this uh, come together here this year. Oh, look at the cousin picked them up. They're like, Dad's not giving us gas. We're going to go out and ride oh, anyway. That's right. I need to get a gas. Okay. <laughs> Completely forgot. I'll be right there with gas. They've been sitting there for like 10 minutes. <laughs> they're not having it, hon. Not having it. <laughs> well, now they're happy. Oh, One of the brother in laws. Here he is. He only saw me coming. And it looks like our raspberries are coming really nice. Got a lot on there. We just threw a sprinkler on it today. We're basically in a drought. We've had rain once in the past like two months. Here's the new strawberry patch that I started this year, you guys. And as you can tell, a few things reseeded from last year. So we've got a lot of borage seeding from last year. I did pull some, but I left some because it actually acts as like a weed barrier and it also um, creates it to stay moist in those areas. And it's not covering any strawberries. We did lose some strawberries due to the drought because I wasn't keeping up with watering. And I also did add some flowers in here this year just because there was so much wide open space. And you know how I am, I can't let uh, a good like space go to waste so as these strawberries grow they're gonna have some basil and snapdragons and borage around them and they're gonna do great they're gonna do awesome right jason yeah definitely so yeah. this is the uh the borage yeah yep yep and that brings in a lot of beneficials too so that'll help po with pollination of the strawberries mm -hmm. along with the basil too 
Um, and, and what I do really like in here is the borage because it does come and go. So once it's done, it's done. We pull it and the strawberries are getting a little bigger too. So they're not huge right now, but we do have other areas of strawberries with ever bearing over by the kids garden. So we've actually been collecting a lot of strawberries from that area this yeah. year. Yeah, it's been nice. This is such a beautiful view, hon. That river birch tree behind you is it's looking huge. amazing. Yeah, that thing is wow. I love that we've added some trees in the garden to help alleviate some of the stress of the sun and some of the stress of the wind. But this one is just absolutely gorgeous and it has that beautiful bark on it that looks like a, looks like paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at how beautiful. Yeah, this is really taken off this year. Mm-hmm. And it's got like the... The three. The three, yeah. Which I love. Yeah. So the other beds that I shared earlier, because this is kind of like a update for those, because I know you guys saw when I seeded them, and we put some zinnias here along with some sunflowers, but these are more of the pro-cut variety, so they don't get too huge. Um, and then we've got our broccoli on each side. And then we have our mugwort right here, which is a nice medicinal herb. And we also like to use that in our dry bundles. And this over here is not cabbage, but it is a flowering kale. So this is more decorative with uh, some snapdragons. And then down over here is where we did the same kind of end cap and the status. So these are beautiful um, dry flowers that hold their color even while they're dry. And remember I told you I seeded like a little variety behind the peppers. So there's Cosmos, Calendula, and some cilantro. So we've got a lot going on there. And then we've got the peppers and carrots. So all the carrots did well, except for this first little area because when I watered, it looks like things kind of spread out and just kind of drained downward and they went that way. So, you know, what? No, I'm just curious. Like, do you think the sulkers need to be replaced or... Replaced? Re repositioned. No, they're fine. Okay. They're okay. I mean, they're getting big now. Yeah, they're, they're totally fine. They're getting huge. <laughs> they're looking real good. <laughs> this nasturtium's getting real hardy here, too. Mm -hmm. That was actually just seeded right in there. That wasn't even a plant. So it's looking really nice. And these reseeded from last year. These are the red amaranthus, so these are actually really pretty. I love it because they get that beautiful red leaf and they'll get a beautiful red plume, but they just like really pop. I know everything looks so green right now, but it'll only be a matter of time when everything gathers its color and this area is going to look spectacular. And I honestly love it as green because my favorite color is green. I do too. There's green, you got some pops of color. But yeah, right now, yeah, everything is real heavy, strong, deep green. Mm-hmm. So small compared to these big boys. <laughs> Didn't Dad pick some? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's Slonikins. Ah, they're so cute. <laughs> Are you going in now? Yeah, I'm gonna wash them. You're gonna wash them? Thank you so much for joining us today, Jason and I. We had so much fun giving you this tour and an update on the beds that you saw seeded and planted up just a few weeks back. And so we will see you next time. Take Thank care. You.